Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of 108 Stitches Baseball Talk. My name is Scott Morgan, Roth Motor City Madmouth, and I'm pleased to be joined by a great crew tonight, and that is Greg Fuchs, our primary sports writer. Greg, welcome back. We're glad to have you back on the glad show. Glad to be back. It's been a while. Good evening, yeah. everybody. Well, we enjoy your writing, and your commentary is also timely as well. Eric Katz, otherwise known as Mr. Concrete Dump. Welcome back, Mr. EK. What do you say? Thanks, Scott. It's great to be back. Uh, we I, I enjoy mixing my crews around, and with the difference of people that we have here, it certainly allows the appearance to be very interesting. Last week, a great show with Justin Wick and Eric Katz. What was so intriguing about that show was they had two kids that are about 52 years old come to mind, and I was the old grandpa on the version pushing 60. I don't really have to worry about that tonight with Fuchs on the broadcast. So with that said, <laughs> let me give everybody a summary about what the broadcast is going to be about tonight. We're, we have three headlines we're going to talk about, uh, a couple of Marlins ones, Vince Scully, three videos that were done out in Cooperstown and three on the way. So we're going to have a little bit of headlines, videos current, and some that are on the way. So with that said, just want to let everybody chronicle, okay, that I know Greg Fuchs was very outspoken on my Facebook page about my re big restaurant tour but what Fuchs has to understand is it's my online journal, too. So I know that when I go on my timeline that I checked into these places. And that way I don't have to write them down because I'm going to lose every stinking note on the planet. So that was a good restaurant tour. Probably a little bit of money. A lot of calories. I enjoyed it. Fun. What's that? I enjoyed the restaurant tour. I'm glad you did. Hey, I, I, I'm not going to single out any particular restaurant because some of those people that are subscribing to the channel, I don't want to alienate you, so I won't do that. But I will tell you, it was a lot of fun. I love the Facebook ability to check in where I was at and all the people that were crying, like, go here, go there, go there, go there, blah, blah, blah. Hey, I loved all the suggestions and actually took a few of them, so it was really cool stuff. So, Also, our trip was such a great trip that when you think about the – working vacation nature this was exactly that okay so for example i have a future show that'll be lining up with a new york city tour guide in the pipeline where this guy will point out the different scams that are out there for the actual you know uh ca petty cabs where you have the bicycle and somebody driving it and he talks about a lot of the bad activities you got to watch out i happen to run across a very ethical one and when we hit it off as well, I said, I'm going to promise you an opportunity. Come on, if you want to talk about it. Oh, yeah, I want to do it. He said, where can I find it? Well, on my YouTube channel, the only way you'll ever see your show is you have to subscribe. He pulls out his phone, shows me where it's at. Boom, end of story. But you know what? That's going to be a great show. And I actually talked to the guy this week, and, and I'm actually thinking bringing him on with multiple episodes because he's got that much material. And anytime I get something where there's a lot of material, I don't care how many episodes we use or whatever platform, we're going to use it. Because our goal here, folks – here is to make sure we entertain and inform and make sure that we, our, our followers, get the maximum amount of things that we can do. So this is in the works. On my trip, okay, we traveled 42 hours, 3,159 miles, and another two hours of sightseeing as well in a 12-day period. So you want to talk about some incredible travel? That's okay. And so, But I was actually on 12 videos. I had two of them on my own, on my hotel the Red Carpet Inn Suites out in Cooperstown. Those people were so fantastic to work with. And I was a guest on another show with Mancini Media with Bruce Kessinger. We had a wonderful show talking with Bill North there as well. So that was the nature of what we've done. So, well, let's talk, talk about the first part of the broadcast are the headlines. Okay. And now that Greg Fuchs knows how many all-stars, or at least I want to think, oh, we're going to play the game of retention, Eric. So don't say nothing because we want to make sure Fuchs gets it figured out. Okay. So it's been a tough season for the Marlins, but – a huge bright spot is how many all-stars did the Marlins send to Los Angeles, Greg? They ended up with three. Sandy Alcantara, Garrett Cooper, and Jazz Chisholm, who unfortunately didn't get to play in the game. Well, but at least he got voted in by the fans, so that's called respect, and that definitely is what it is. So Jazz is a good guy. He'll always be able to know that he can go forward the rest of his career as an all-star, and that was a pretty good thing there. And Sandy Alcantara, who I thought really should have been the starter in that game, wasn't because Clayton Kershaw yeah. was the popular favorite in L.A., and as a result, he did. But let me tell you, that second inning, that Sandy pitch was a very clean inning. So to me, he was almost like the starter. And then, But Clayton Kershaw, the popular choice, Sandy Alcantara followed him. So, Greg, any uh, quick reactions about the All-Star game and the, the three amigos slash Marlins? 
It, it is nice for a, a relatively smaller market team to get three guys on there, especially since the team isn't doing overly well. And I was sort of amazed, not that he didn't deserve it, that a Miami Marlin and Jazz Chisholm got voted to be a starter. That, that says a lot. Well, I think Jazz Chisholm, I love his charisma. He can hit for power, and he's and he's got a lot of speed. So I yeah. think I was happy to him, and I've talked to him many times. What a great kid he is. All right, EK, what do you got to say about this? I mean, you know, I always enjoy small market teams being able to put guys out on the national stage rather than your typical Yankees, Dodgers, Cubs, Red Sox, and, and all that. But, you know, like last year with the Brewers having their three, their three, the three headed dragon of Freddie Peralta, Freddie Peralta and Corbin Byrne to Brandon Woodruff in the All Star game last year, you know, we got to see it with actual players with this year with the Marlins. I mean, obviously the Marlins, you know, we call, them, call them what they are. People like to make fun of them. They're, they're, they're the governor of Florida actually joked in 2020 calling the game social distancing, but, um, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's great that the Marlins are actually having some, actually putting something decent to watch on the field. Now, will it be a little while till it becomes, comp- will it become competitive? Who knows? But the fact of the matter is, you know, they got guys who the Marlins are actually are, are pretty entertaining now for the first time since they had John Carlos Stanton and Jose Fernandez and more. Yeah, I think the only problem the Marlins have had, I've always said along their pitching's great, but their Achilles heel has been their offense, and it's obviously showing. That's why they're not really doing as well as they can. I've always said if you can't hit the baseball, then you got problems. It was and some of the additions that they brought in. Jorge Salar has not really performed. Avisel Garcia, I believe, has underperformed a little bit, but yeah, they, they've been major disappointments. Yeah, well, I mean, the way they have, but uh, their pitching has been pretty good. The thing about the Marlins, the thing about the Marlins, though, is like when they had Ozuna, Yelich, and 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 Stanton, they had the offense, but their pitching, you know, after Jose Fernandez was down, the pitching staff kind of tanked with it. Right. And you know, after they after they kind of traded everybody around and decided to build from the ground up and do it the right way, um, I think that's where we started to see a turn where the Marlins are can actually field a sim a semi-competitive team That's true. where, where, you know, sooner now will the fans flock to uh, flock to Marlins park or Lone Depot park, whatever you call it these days, who knows, right. but at least the product is at least watchable for the longest time. It wasn't. Good point. Well, uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about Sandy Alcantara. I have a lot to get to tonight on Monday night, Sandy Alcantara threw seven scoreless innings as a Marlins defeated the Padres three to nothing. And I'll get Pablo Lopez tomorrow, but, and I'm glad he was not traded at the deadline. I think that would have been a foolish move and would have sent a wrong message to your fan base. But Sandy Alcantara, in my opinion, is the actual favorite to win the Cy Young award. I hope he does get it. And he's been consistent all year. So, you know, but he did have a good outing last night against the San Diego Padres, which many teams are considered a low, a loaded offensively. I don't, I mean, I know Fernando Tatis Jr. has been saddled with an 80 game suspension, but don't tell me that the other players on that team certainly can't produce offensively because you know that they can, but more power to Sandy. I had a chance to talk to him in spring training. Great kid. Marlon did lock him up for a little while, so at least they got him in there in the full. So, all right, Greg, what's your take on Sandy? He's you know, at the beginning of the season. I thought the Marlins' rotation would keep them in playoff contention, and Alcantara and Lopez would be the two guys heading up the staff, which they have been. But Alcantara has even exceeded my high expectations, and his ERA has been below, I think, two all season long. And, and he's just dominating most nights, six, seven, eight innings. Maybe he walks a guy or two, strikes out over a batter an inning. He has just been lights out. And unless something goes wrong in the next month and a half, I think he's your Cy Young Award winner. Eric? I, you have to make him the Cy Young Award winner. He's the one of the few pitchers now that can really go deep into games consistently. Where he go, where he can easily go, where if you if you want him to, he can throw a complete game. He's one of those rare breed pitchers now that consistently goes, who can can go past six innings. I mean, you have to give him the Cy Young for the year that he's having, and considering the fact his offense has been doing him no favors, you have to give him the Cy Young because ultimately, I think a lot of the wins that they've had have come on the back of Sandy Alcantara. Good points, Eric, and you know the thing that I should point out too is the fact that Sandy Alcantara, to me, can go seven, eight, nine games. So the word complete game is not foreign language. It comes to talking 
Sandy Alcantara. And let me tell you, Don Manningly doesn't mind pushing him seven, eight, nine. Once upon a time, Don Manningly played in an era where, you know, they did throw a complete game. Don't happen very much now. But when you got a horse like Sandy, and I call him a thoroughbred, he's the kind of guy that reminds me of Roy Halladay in this day and age. And the list goes on and on. I mean, I know Roy Halladay was one of them. Maybe a couple of other ones in this day and age, Eric Katz, that Sandy reminds you. I know, uh, uh, I said Roy Halladay, but name me a couple other ones that could go uh, deep. That can go deep. I'd say Garrett Cole. Yeah. I think Justin Verlander can. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, Wainwright has proven that he can. I think that um, obviously Alcantara now can. I believe um, who else Who else can go deep that like does it consistently? Um. Trying to think of the guy for the Phillies, Cliff. Uh, Cliff Lee. Yeah, thank you. He he, he went deep too. Yeah, Cliff Lee. Yeah, yeah. Cliff Lee went deep. Could go. D- Cliff Lee could go deep, especially with that devastating spike curveball. Yeah. So and, there you go. And also, so even be, be pri- even see Sabathia proved he can go deep. And Roy Oswalt's another one I want to mention too. So that was off top. So Before there you go. It, with the Astros, yes. Right. Well, whatever. He still went deep. Yeah. So, so it's not like guys don't go deep. They just don't go deep very often. And I'm just so glad that to me, Sandy Alcantara is one of those. All right. Greg Fuchs wrote a dynamite article on Vince Scully's memories. I'm going to get to you in a moment, Greg. Okay. okay. And here's the thing. I'm, I was a, me- I'm a member or was, or I don't know where we stand now. Southern California sports broadcaster. I was hoping to see meet Vince Scully at one of those events. Unfortunately, he was getting a little older and he did pre recorded stuff. And when they played over at Dodger stadium, you know, I never had a chance to uh, get out there. You know, I actually went there for the Olympics, but Vince Scully used to go there a lot and Dodger Town. And I always miss Vince Scully by a week or two because he's flying across country. But I wish I would have met him. I did spend time over in Cooperstown visiting a lot of the things with the Ford Frick Award up on another level of the Hall of Fame. And I've always thought outside of Ernie Harwell, Vince Scully was truly my favorite. But I have to put Ernie Harwell because he's my mentor, my uncle, and everything about him. But Vince Scully, to me, is truly one of the greatest broadcasters of all time. But that said, that's what I think about him. Greg Fuchs, you wrote an article on him. Why don't you go ahead and talk about some of your memories pertaining to Vinny? Yeah. One of the good things, I mean, I think the MLB Network at ESPN did a great job showing all of the highlights of Vince Scully's great calls over the years. And he was around for so long, you forgot about some of them. I mean, I didn't remember that he was doing the NFL game when Montana threw to Dwight Clark in the end of the back of the end zone. Uh, he was there for Henry Aaron's 715th home run, the Kirk Gibson home run off of Eckersley in the World Series. Might be the most thing that I recollect on him. And he you also threw made? one. And you also had the Rich Gossage joining in 84 as well. And so I'm going to ask you a question, Greg. You're, you're old enough. When he threw that thing over to Montana, where was he? Uh, called that game. Where was that Super Bowl held at? Man, I just saw the highlight a few times a couple weeks ago, but I can't recollect. Well, you know what? I can't really lean on you for this one. Super Bowl 16 was held at the Pontiac Silverdome with the, between the Bengals and the 49ers. So okay. I am not giving you a hard time on that because at least you were smart enough to go out there and remember the call in the NFC championship game. So you did pretty good. Nobody would have gotten even sneaky Hembo wouldn't have gotten it. Okay. Uh, get up or not get up uh, first. Well, get up. Yeah. Okay. I, I mix those shows up, but, but they helped me uh, out a lot, but even sneaky Hembo, I may have tricked him on the Pontiac Silverdome one. So, but that's where that was. All right. So uh, Eric, with that said, give me some of your recollections of Vince Scully. Oh boy. Vince Scully. I mean, Oh boy, re- that's a lot. All right, go he, ahead. Well, he was still broadcasting when I was about to when I was about to graduate college. It got to the point where I'm about to enter the workforce. He's about 80 plus years old, and he's still there. <laughs> oh, I mean, there is no broadcaster who's affiliated with with baseball like Finn Scully. I mean, yeah. none. He could talk about the history of beards and make it sound entertaining. That's true. I mean, nobody called a game better than Scully. Just he was the voice of baseball. It yeah, I used after- to like watching Vince Scully with Joe Garrigio on Saturday. Night. I mean, I mean, what I, I wasn't alive for this, but probably my favorite call was the 86 World Series game six, Mets Red Sox, where the B- Buckner happened, where Mookie, mm-hmm. Mookie Wilson hits the ball and he says, behind the bag, it gets by Buckner. Here comes yeah. Ray Knight and the Mets are going to win. Yeah. I mean, 
there is nobody who could call a game and also talk about the history of home plate. I mean, the guy was just unreal. And also the fact that he was still gracious and kind, despite all that stardom, where not every broadcaster, you know, is that way. Take John Madden, for example. Um, but, you know, there is nobody who can call who could call a game better. I've, I've heard I've heard his broadcast and nobody was even when he was about to um, retire. You know, he was he was done. And where he said, I needed you more than you needed me. Nah, Ben, it's the other way around. We needed you. Yeah, you know, I feel bad that our paths never crossed when there were way, potential possibilities where they could, you know, over at Vero Beach mainly. And then obviously when I was out in L.A. at the Southern California Sports Broadcasters Awards, that would have been a thrill. I did happen to meet Joe Davis and a lot of the other L.A. people. They treated me really well, so it was pretty neat. Joe Davis is going to be a good one. He's actually from my neck of the woods in, in the Michigan area. I mean, Scully did a great job in capturing the moment. I mean, some of those iconic moments he's known for. He knew exactly what to say. It's almost like he knew it was going to happen in advance and prepared what he was going to say, but it obviously wasn't the case. He just reacted to the moment, had great lines, just captured it, said it eloquently, and he knew when to shut up sometimes and just let the video take over on TV. Yeah, well, it's, that's a mark of a true legend. For a lot of you folks that ever get out to Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, you got to go by the area where you have the – broadcasters and the writers because Vince Scully's all over the place there. Of course, he's in other places too, but the Ford Frick Award, in fact, here's a little interesting thing about the Ford Frick Award. Ernie Harwell got it in 1981 and Vince Scully got it in 1982. So, a little something there. So, All right, well, you know what? They had a lot of fun on the road. Candy Ebling and I had a field day, as I alluded to before, we did about 12 videos and then, of course, two shows for Eric, for which you were a part of one of them. So, I'm just going to talk about a few videos that we had done up there. And then we're going to talk about three that will be released, okay? First of all, Cooper Sound video number one I'd like to talk about as a young Canadian fan uh, was actually taking a picture of Candy and I, and I invited him on our show, and he obviously, it was unbelievable. His dad, I asked him, what do you think? Do you, you mind if I bring your son on? I said, no, I, if he wants to come on, more power to it. It's a generation to generation thing, father and son. And this Stephen kid here, what was interesting about the kid is he wore a Marlin shirt because he liked the he liked the logo, and, and it looked good. Now, he's not a Marlins fan, but he was wearing the fish colors anyhow. But, yeah, he went out there and took a photo of my wife and I, and we had an unbelievable time. But here's the thing. Eric, I've always viewed you as one of the brighter young baseball minds out there, and I really mean that wholeheartedly. But I'm going to tell you something, Eric. Okay, this kid was sharp. Okay, he talked about the Pete Rose thing, whether he'll ever get in the Hall of Fame. And I told the kid that I think – that Rose will get in when he's dead. And then we also talked about the steroid situation. And this kid here to me, when you talk about the fact that he did know his stuff is remarkable. But when I did this particular interview, it was just as I was entering the hall of fame I, and I told him, you know, this just seems too interesting. I going in, you know, what better way to start off your trip into the hall of fame where, you know, they're open from nine to seven and we did stay the whole, whole time to come up with a Canadian youngster in town for like about a day and a half to two days. And all of a sudden we put together a really good video and, and I'll tell you, we've got some pretty good hits on it, but it's just so cool how opportunities fall into your lap and a Canadian youngster that knows his baseball stuff, his dad loving every moment that his kid is going to be interviewed by a guy that's been in the business for four decades. And I was glad that not only did they, I make their day, but they made mine. So with that said, okay, Greg, capture the moment. What do you think of a youngster going with his dad, getting interviewed by a guy like uh, b being interviewed for a show. How do you think that has to uh, stink I mean, with I mean, it's a it's a great story. I always tell my daughter, who's 22 and spends much too much time on the couch looking at her phone, that you need to get out of that door. Because once you walk out that front door, you never know what's going to happen, who you're going to see. And in your case, you probably had some preconceived notions of what was going to go on in Cooperstown and how your day was going to go. And all of a sudden, you just sort of trip over this young kid from Canada who's got a Marlins jersey, and you just start chatting with him, and you go, holy moly, this kid knows his stuff. Let me interview him. And, and, and you know, that's just a, like a great story. It's nice seeing young baseball fans because, I mean, you, I wonder at times, you know, it's, you know, stereotypical baseball fans tend to be older these days. 
Uh, and you just wonder 20, 30 years from now, who are the fans going to be? That kid is obviously one of them. So great story. Well, yeah, you know, the thing that I'm going to make sure that you guys know and everybody out there that's watching our show and listening to it as well is it's an instinctual thing. The only way you survive in our business, folks, follow your instincts. You talk to somebody and then you can do a spontaneous show just like that. And that's exactly that would probably actually be one of those things where you go somewhere. If it feels right, you go out and do it. And the way this one bumped into our lap here, and there were a lot of things on that trip that really fell into place. And this was just the beginning of what would turn out to be an unbelievable week. Well, I want to go over a couple of things before I turn you over to you, Eric. Okay. Subscribe to the South Florida Tribune on our YouTube channel by going to youtube.com. Look for South Florida Tribune, hit the subscribe button, or visit www.southfloridatribune.com and follow us on Twitter at Tribune South. Okay. To advertise, call 954 304 4941. The audio portion of the show can be heard on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever it gets your podcast. So, folks, whether you're out there, uh, doing public transportation in the car, whatever you're a passenger, you can get us a lot of different ways. We certainly like to make sure that we entertain you any way you got to do, whether you're at work, whether you're on your route home, or whether you're watching us on the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. So please, folks, very easy to subscribe to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. So go to youtube.com, hit South Florida Tribune. You have the old little T there with the palm trees. That's that. Boom. Hit subscribe. End of story beginning of relationship, and we have a lot of fun going ahead with that. So with that said, Eric Getz, why don't you go ahead and dissect what we did with the young Canadian fan? How do you feel about it? Well, you know, who the fan's going to be. That's, that's, a that's an, a that's an, I take, that's kind of offensive toward, um, toward um, baseball fans of uh, my generation, because we do exist. Um, there, there will always be fans of baseball. I'm sure people who were, who had been watching the game since Babe Ruth were wondering the same thing going forward. I'm sure even when Major League Baseball began, they were wondering if there would be fans. Even when baseball began, people were wondering if people would actually watch this. Well, year after year, they are they're here. They're coming, they're going to games. They're watching it on the tube. They're they're listening in their cars. They heck, I I don't I enjoy putting on Bob Euchre when I'm going somewhere. And I just per- personally, it's just you know that there will always be fans. I mean, there's always those crazy fans, including myself who love everything about the game, who go all, who can go all the way back as far back as you want. Well, we know that baseball is a worldwide sport. They obviously play it in Korea. They play it in Japan. You know, there are a bunch of Canadians that ended up in there. I, think, I believe Fergie Jenkins was a He's, Canadian that ended up playing in Major League Baseball. And the list goes on and on. So and once upon a time, there was a Montreal Expos. Golly knows if there will ever be a Montreal Expos. But since Rick nope. Curdy's not on the show, we won't address it. We'll leave it alone. We know about the concrete dump. We'll leave it at that. But all in all, the, the experience was great with this youngster. I really enjoyed it. And I think it really set the tone for what the week was really going to turn out to be. All right, guys, I'm going to give you a lesson in networking. Okay, you ready? And that said, and Eric, you probably know it a lot more because you're a Twitter guy, and I know you have a fair amount of followers as well. But I, I was doing a networking thing with Mark Meridai, who I actually met on Twitter, and he was in town for his son who was playing youth baseball outside of my hotel. Once again, the red carpet in, great backdrop, Catskill Mountains there. And I promised Mark that I would do a show with him one way or the other, you know, and as it turns out, we didn't need to do it this way because he happened to be in town when I was there. And boy, you talk about a 30 minute show with two guys that are buddies. He helps me go ahead and share a lot of our stuff on Twitter. And he's just one of the nicest guys. Him and his wife are great people. But folks, if you're looking, I was joking around with them as we were doing the show. We are coming to your city, as college football would say. You never know where I'm going to find somebody. If I think you have a lot of knowledge, I'll talk about anything sports or non-sports related. But I'm going to tell you, this networking thing I did with Mark Meridai was outstanding. Mark's one of the nicest people in the world. His wife is a nice person. He's a teacher, a coach. And you want to talk about a role model. Mark Meridai, okay, is definitely that. So, Greg, did you learn anything about networking when I'm talking about Mark Meridai? I have a minor networking story today, and it doesn't involve baseball. What did you learn about Meridai before you give me your story? Uh, I'm not familiar with Mark Meridai, so I'm you not really sure. Are you familiar with Twitter? I'm familiar with Twitter. Are you? Have you ever sent anybody a direct message before? That's what I, I sent someone today. 
Uh, it was uh, happened to be fantasy football. This younger guy could have been fifteen, couldn't be, could have been twenty five. Couldn't tell from his picture. And he said, "Like I'm just sort of sitting around doing nothing. If you got any fantasy football questions, hit me up." And, and he responded immediately. And I responded to him, and he responded to me. Went back and forth. And, it, and he's some guy I will definitely reach out to. You know, go, going forward. So, what his interests are beyond fantasy football, I'm not sure yet. I'll find out. Well, you know what's so cool about what I've done, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever the case may be, is I've made a lot of good friends, found a lot of good guests on here. But I'm going to tell you my three biggest ones on Twitter, Steve Ballesteri, Eric Katz, and Mark Meriday. And I have a bunch of other ones, but those are the three people that I've shared the airwaves with. And I'm going to tell you, each and every part of social media, depending on how you slice it up, is unbelievable. And Meriday to me was pretty good. And I think the only reason I, I love bringing this up because I think it's a lesson to everybody, whether you're in sports or out of sports, that if you meet somebody on social media, you you make a friend first, and then all of a sudden they're with you all the way, and it's just part of building everything. And that's what I enjoyed about Mark Meriday, one of the classiest people I've ever met. And I met a lot of good people in my day doing this business as well. But Mark, you know, Eric, obviously you're a fixture on what we do for sure, and without Twitter, I wouldn't have, you wouldn't be on this show and we wouldn't be involved in a lot of projects together. So Eric, why don't you talk about what your experiences are like networking as I did with Mark and what we've, we've done together, actually. Well, you never know. I mean, that's how I met you. I mean, you find, you know, especially now at Twitter with how expansive it's become, you, you find fans from any team you could think of, you know, it's great how like, you know, now you can, now that you can have chats where you can actually hear the person's voice on the other end. Mm -hmm. where you know they have something called spaces which you know pretty much unites fans for other sports i know the all-star game and i know that for the first time it was kind of weird at first but you were meeting people from twitter and sitting with them during the ball game i forget what all-star game did that i think it might have been the one in phil i think it might have been the one and i think in kansas city i believe right and you get to do that i mean it's it's an expansive world now i mean at one point those places seem so far away now you know, it's right on our, it's right at our fingertips. Yeah. Well, again, you talk about all the technology, the te video teleconferencing and all the streaming resources. It just blows me away. You know, I, I talk about a guy like me that started in the business in 79 here. I am in it in 2022 and it just blows it, the new t media, old media, whatever you want to call it. just unbelievable. All right. Last video I want to talk about the sports exchange. Uh, and I, it was really this Pittsburgh sports scene. Uh, inside Double Day Field, another unbelievable place. I did one with Dale Eller. You want to talk about something? This guy here, we were just talking inside the grandstand. We got to know each other. Like you said, Greg, you get to know somebody inside. You get a feeling, hey, you know what? Let's. I got my iPhone 13 Plus, got a good video camera. Let's fire it up again. And lo and behold, I had another great broadcast, which went a better part of close to 30 minutes or so with Dale Eller, super nice guy. And it was done at Double Day Field. So I've given you three live examples of excellent shows that happened there. And that to me. So, Greg, I met a friend in Pittsburgh, okay? And, Eric, I met a friend in Pittsburgh. All of a sudden, we got a little bit of fun there with the Pittsburgh sports scene as a result of Double Day Fields. Any quick interpretations of that? You, you, you're losing me on Double Day Field. Where is that in Pittsburgh? Double Day Field. No, I think Double Day the Field, field is in Cooperstown. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. No big deal. No, Double right. Day Field is obviously in Cooperstown, and right. either guy's okay. a Pittsburgh native. Yeah. That's all. My, my, my number, word, number one networking tip, whether it's sports or, or whatever, is wear a shirt or a hat that has a logo on it. doesn't mm -hmm. have to be sports. It can be college. It can be a business. And the number of people who will come up to you and say, hey, are you from, are you a Marlins fan? Are you from Florida? Or, you know, are you, you got a Tiger shirt on? Are you, are you from Detroit? And you never know where those conversations will lead you. And, and, if, and if it's sports related, most sports fans just love to talk sports, even if it's with a total stranger. No question about it. Yeah. All right. In fact, you're leading me to a good segue in a moment. Okay. So, all right, Eric, give me your uh, thoughts about Dale Eller and the Pittsburgh sports scene and Double Day Field. Well, Double Day Field is a heck of is a, it, an incredible field. I mean, it's a dream come true for your youth team to go out there and play um, and play in Cooperstown, which is baseball mecca. Um, but it's you know you just never know. I mean, you never know who you might meet. Heck, I've had I've met guys who worked in baseball just because I happen to be eating at the same restaurant they are. Or I've gotten I've sold a sponsorship back when I was interning with the Chicago Band, 
Chicago Bandits softball team now now defunct. I you know someone inquired about it because he heard the conversation I was having with the with the broadcaster I was partnered with. You know, you just never know. The guy's just sitting there piping up, looking up, handed us his business card, told him to give him a call on X day, and boom, we sold a sponsorship. There you go. Well, you know, I'm glad you guys brought that up. I want to make an announcement that I made last night on Fire Up Michigan. I'm going to make it again tonight for those that didn't hear it. We're, we're going to be adding another show called the Fire Up Series, which will encompass markets that we're not already in. We currently have the series going into Wisconsin, Michigan, and Florida. We're going to do one, the Fire Up Series, which will mean that we can talk about any region of the country under one umbrella. So stay tuned for updates. We'll be more than happy to get them out there as more details emerge. Okay, with that said, okay, we got some videos that are on the way. I'm going to talk about, I have a Yankee fan here. I, I can see exactly where he's at. So, right, Mr. Katz. So I'm going to sure. bring him out slowly, and then you guys can comment on him. I love what you said, Greg, about the logo. So what I did is I took that to a certain extent dream here. I don't think it was a daring move at all. I mean, I wore a Detroit Tiger shirt at Yankee Stadium, okay, at the new at the new Yankee Stadium and the old Yankee Stadium. And the new Yankee Stadium is a house that George Steinbrenner built. And the old stadium actually has diamonds and a recreation center for soccer, which is really good for the youth. And I think the Bronx got it right, which was a brilliant move. Now, the reason I wore the Tiger shirt is because the rivalries between the teams – are unbelievable throughout the last several years. And if you think of the 1936 Hall of Fame class, Babe Ruth and Ty Cobb were in it. Okay, a little segue. I did a video on that, but we'll reveal that later on. And I joked around about David Price being playing for the Yankees in 2008 when I actually saw them play the Tampa Bay Rays. Mind you, it was just a joke. And don't think the Yankees didn't wish that they had Price anyhow. But the thing that's really interesting about it, and again, I just joked around about it. I mean, who in their mind wouldn't have wanted to go ahead and have David Price back then? But what was so cool about the whole thing is that this weekend, okay, we were up there. The Yankees were actually playing in Boston, and the Tampa Bay Rays came to town Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So we kind of missed them by a couple of days. But the reality is, is I have covered – both organizations that covered the Florida State League, Fort Lauderdale Yankees, uh, the New York Yankees during spring training. And, of course, I've actually gone ahead, covered the Tigers quite a bit through the years. So, you know, it's just unbelievable that I've had a lot of good connections. I have so much respect for the Yankees. They won 27 world championships. Who wouldn't? They've had some of the greatest players on the planet. And what's so good about that old Yankee Stadium piece, because, again, we had two of them. You talk about the great players that played in there. You got Ty Cobb against Ruth. You got Lou Gehrig in there, Mickey Mantle. Joe DiMaggio, Billy Martin, manager, Reggie Jackson. Am I missing some? You know darn well I am. You know, and, you know, it's just to me, it's unbelievable when you think of all the different players, Al Kaline of the Tigers, Mickey Lowledge, the Catfish Hunter, the list goes on and on. But, geez. So, all right. So, you know what, Eric, since you're a Yankee guy, when you think of great legendary Yankee players, who do you think of that comes to mind? Could it be, is it any era? I don't care. Okay, we'll go Babe Ruth. Okay. Lou Gehrig. Yep. Joe DiMaggio. Yep. Derek Jeter. Yep. Um, Marano Rivera. Okay. Also, Mickey Mantle. Good choice. Roger Maris. Mm hmm. Also, um, Whitey Ford. Okay. Reggie. Yep. Billy Martin. Mm hmm. Sparky Lyle. Okay. Also, um, I know um, Ron Guidry. Yeah, Thurman Munson. Yes, I was getting there. Thurman Munson. Also, um, another great, another great um, pitcher. They're, they had a, they've had a lot over the years. All right. Well, you know what? Let Greg take over. Name a few. And, and, you, you, the big name you left out was Yogi Berra. There you go. Okay. Well, you that's why you Casey, Casey Stengel as the manager. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then some of the more current ones, you know, the Bernie Williams types. And, and then you just had some Yankees, not all-star players or Hall of Fame players, but you just associate them with the Yankees, the Paul O'Neills, the Scott Brocious Lou Pinella. type players. Never heard of Don Manningly? Yeah, he's yeah, pretty Don good. Baseball. Yeah, he's he, pretty, he good. pretty good. good. Also, yeah. Dave Winfield. I'd probably put him there. All right. Well, you get the point, folks. A lot of great players played over at old Yankee Stadium. Don Manningly, 
see him tomorrow down at Lone Depot Park there. So there you go. So we had the opportunity to actually stand on the field, just to take a couple pictures with my wife, and then we did one outside there, and then we did one outside the new Yankee Stadium, and obviously it's a bucket list to get to the new Yankee Stadium at some point. I know it ain't going anywhere for a while because we know it's a house that George Steinbrenner built. And, you know, what's interesting about that, stadium is it looks a lot like what they've done in Tampa with George M. Steinbrenner Field too. Mm -hmm. But you know, and I had and I'm just glad that I had an opportunity through Stub Elf, although I paid a few bucks to see a game against ironically the Tampa Bay Rays who have been pretty relevant with the resources that they've had. So you know, but it's just great, you know, to be able to stand on that field. It's something you always think about. Everybody talks about I think Bronx is the baseball capital of the major leagues. I really mm -hmm. do. Like anything else, yeah, there are a lot of other ones you can put Fenway Park in Boston in discussion. You can put Wrigley Field Wrigley there. Field. Yep. What's that? Wrigley Field for sure. Yeah. You can. I, I remember the first time I went to Yankee Stadium, my dad took me there as a kid, and we were sitting on the, the lower level, right below where one of the upper levels was above us. Was that and one? the Yankees, it was a day game. The Yankees lost to the Orioles that day. And that was back when the day, and they gave you the beer in the can, and you just hung on to the can. And after the game was mm -hmm. over, Hundreds of beer cans went flying over the <laughs> out of the upper deck onto everyone down below. Was that Yankee? Yeah, was, was that the Yankee? St memory of my first trip to Yankee Stadium. Was that yeah. the Yankee Stadium that was right by um, the jailhouse across the Bronx jailhouse? Well, this is the original Yankee Stadium. Yep, that's right by the jail. It's okay. um, it was where the facade the facade was green. Well, they've done a lot of renovations, so it's all pretty good stuff. I'm glad you guys were, uh, mentioned a lot of players that way. I had two capable people in case I missed a few. But anyway, so the list of players we mentioned are unbelievable. And the last thing I want to talk about tonight is we're re releasing another video with Hank Aaron. And actually, that's going to be for Fire Up Wisconsin. I want to make sure we have some good stuff there. And why am I mm -hmm. putting Hank Aaron in a Fire Up Wisconsin? For good he reason. Played, he played for the Brewers. Right. Well, but now and he also that. and he also right. played for the he also did the, the Braves early in his career in Milwaukee. Yeah. Right there, you go, Eric. My goodness. And if anybody that goes by Miller Park, okay, goes out there and sees that Hank Garen's written all over the place, I thought well, it was appropriate to put it there. And of course, we certainly want to There's add a... some pretty good shows into it. But I what what happened in that situation with the Aaron video is I was not able to go up where his gallery was, so I had to do it by his art because we had to make sure he. Or avoid copyright issues is what we have to do. Otherwise, they'll get kicked back. And uh, But this is a great scene, and when we release it, we'll certainly promote it to everybody out on the platform, which is why that's an advantage of subscribing to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. If, in case you're just joining us right now, go to YouTube.com and go to South Florida Tribune with the logo and out there with the palm trees and the SF, all you got to do is hit subscribe and bingo was a name and you're going to get a lot of good content and a lot of good shows. So, but you know, so, you know, I, I don't know about you, Greg and Eric. Okay. To me, I will always view Hank Aaron as the all time home run king. Forget Barry Bonds asterisk this guy until the end of time. I don't care, but Hank Aaron folks, in my opinion, is the all time home run king. And to me, the only thing I haven't done is visited the 715 spot in Atlanta, but I know it's a heck of a lot closer than Cooperstown, right? You know, 575, I'll get there one day. But to me, Hank Aaron, rest in peace, my friend, okay? Never had a chance to meet you, but I certainly recognize you as a home run king. And I'll bet there's a lot of people out there that are probably agreeing with me as well. Greg Future, not in your head. So say what's on your mind, buddy. Go ahead, Hank Aaron? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I agree. He's the all-time home run king. There's no doubt about it. Uh, he's also the all-time RBI king. Uh, okay. And, you know, he was just – I mean, sometimes when people say, who's the greatest player ever, a lot of times people don't mention Aaron for some reason. You know, hmm. they go they go Mays, they go Ted Williams, they go Babe Ruth. But, I mean, Aaron was good, very good, for a very long time. I don't think he ever hit 50 home runs in a season. But every year he was hitting 35, 40 something home runs. Uh, very, very durable. Also a good outfielder, had some speed. And he was just also a very quiet, uh, classy guy. So uh, I was never a Braves fan, but you, but you always had to appreciate him and, and respect him. He, he was great. Yeah, well, he was consistent. He hit 40 every year, no big deal. All of a sudden, 40 here, 40 here. And guess what? They do add up, you know, 35, 40, and overall sustained period of time. Good points, Greg. Eric. Okay, I mean, since you obviously are in Milwaukee, I think that's you're relocated, so Miller yes. Park isn't that far away. So I'm sure that every now and then you probably go by the 
the you know uh, stuff over at Miller Park where you have the brace. What are your thoughts about Hank Aaron? I mean, he's called the hammer for the reason. Right. For a reason. I mean, the guy was just people forget too. He's the all-time hit leader in RBIs. He yeah. is, you know, yeah. Hank was Hank was an all-star for 25 times older, from 55 to 75. Now, now think about that for a second. He also he was just incredible. I mean, he hits he hit over he hit he was the all-time home run leader, and you know you can probably say he still is depending on your views on Barry Bonds, but he was in. I mean, imagine what he would have done had he not been forced to play in the Negro Leagues. He might have hit 800. He was just, even in his later life, he was an executive with the Braves. He did that up until almost the day he died. I think he might have been the CEO at one point. You know, no question he's synonymous with the Braves. And I think what's great that I love about Henry Aaron, that he never forgot his roots and he ended his his career with the Milwaukee Brewers. And that to me is just unbelievable. I mean, I've never, I wish I would have met him. A lot of people you wish it to meet just never worked out. But to me, the fact that he started as a Milwaukee Brave and ended with the Milwaukee Brewers with his time in between in Atlanta, obviously a town where, you know, there's a fair amount of minorities down there. To me, he's just unbelievable. And I can't sit here and tell you that without Jackie Robinson, if it weren't for Jackie Robinson, we don't have Hank Aaron, but that'll be for another conversation. So yeah, my, my, other on, yeah, my other thought on Aaron, plus all the guys who played in that era, when you think of home run hitters today, they spend a lot of time in the weight room and they just swing for the fences every time they're up. Aaron wasn't that physically imposing, but he had those quick wrists and he just put the fat part of the bat on the fat part of the ball. Well, that's why he hit 755 home runs, and I'm going to get back to what I said moments ago. He's the all-time home run king. You want to debate me, go ahead and do it. You can go ahead and email me at southfordertribune at gmail.com. I'll be more than happy to go out there and share opinions with you as well. So, Greg, what an incredible show tonight. I mean, you know, again, let's just summarize what we accomplished tonight. We talked a little bit about the Marlins beginning. We're talking about the three all-stars, Sandy Alcantara, of course, Vince Scully, and we go into the Cooperstown video one with the Canadian fan leading to Mark Meridai. And, of course, the Pittsburgh sports scene, you know, what double field with Dale Eller. And I, folks, hope you get a lot out of it. But, you know, every part of this whole broadcast is very thoroughly planned. And, again, what, I don't care what part you take out of it. Networking is something. But everything that we try to put together with these shows are very thoroughly planned so that everybody is designed to hopefully get something out of it. If we can put together a 45, 50 minute broadcast, then you get one thing out of it. We have done our job for sure. And then of course we talk about the Yankees the old and the new stadium and the Hank Aaron as well. So, you know, when you have people like I have, and I like to have different combinations of people because everybody has something to bring to this platform. And it's so much important to get a lot of different views as well. And, I'm very proud of everybody that comes on here that gives us their best shot. And, you know, and I always believe that you want to make sure everybody has an opportunity if they're going to invest their time, that they all get a fair opportunity to say what's on their mind without jumping all over people. So what I'm going to do right now is go over some other information. And then you guys, and we're going to call it a night. Subscribe to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. <clears throat> South Florida Tribune on our YouTube channel or visit www.southfordatribune.com or follow us on Twitter at Tribune South. That's where all. I've, that's where I've gone out there. I met a lot of people. And you can to advertise, call 954-304-4941. The audio portion of the show can be heard on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. So, you know, again, met a lot of good people on Twitter. I meet a lot of good people everywhere. If there's good people out there, we have to look for the good people. And that's what we do the best we can to try to encourage here because we're here to entertain and make sure that it, with all stress that you have during your day, we want to make certain that we can hopefully take a little bit of an edge. So with that said, Greg, why don't you go ahead and let everybody know how they get hold of you. Yeah, on Twitter, you can follow me at G Fuchs, at Gregory Fuchs. In my articles, you can find those on SouthFloridaTribune.com. Uh, and I wrote one recently on Vin Scully. I hope you read it and enjoy it because I enjoyed uh, writing it. And if you should find yourself in Vero Beach, Florida, do yourself a favor if you're a baseball fan and go visit Dodger Town. It's a step back in time. Yeah, I've been there many times. In fact, folks, just I'll also point out, thanks for bringing it up, Greg, okay? This show will be inserted 
in Greg Fuchs's article on Vin Scully. So just so you know, it'll be out there on our YouTube channel as well. But I will also insert the story in Greg's story so you have an opportunity to look at his memories and watch the show. I always treat it like a Cracker Jack box. Get the old caramel corn, stick the surprise in there. What do you got? A good solid one, two pence. All right, Eric Katz, Mr. Concrete Dump, take it away. You can follow me on my Twitter at at, at um, Sports Team News, or you can and you can find me on Belly Up Sports. Well, and you're also a regular here on the with our company as well. South Florida Tribune does a really good job sharing our stuff on, you know, not only the written content, but he does a good job with the broadcast as well. And again, you know, Eric, uh, you talk about a young guy with a boatload of potential. The sky's the limit for you, Eric. I'm just glad that you're a part of my organization. So, meanwhile, folks, hope you enjoyed tonight's edition of 108 Stitches Baseball Talk. My name is Scott Morgan Roth, Motor City Mouth. Pleased to be joined by Greg Fuchs and Eric Katz. These guys did a great job. This is actually the first time that they worked together with me. So, you know, a great first act for these guys, and I can rest sure they won't be their last first act because I was impressed with the chemistry and the balance between the age as well between you two. And of course, I just like to fit in and have a lot of fun with it. So meanwhile, folks, thank you very much for joining us on this edition of 108 Stitches Baseball Talk. And we look forward to the next episode. You have yourself a great Wednesday and we'll catch you down the line. So once again, please subscribe to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com. Look for South Florida Tribune and please hit the subscribe button to get everything we've got to offer. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.